Here is the recap of the first season of The Witcher. Blood Origin The story begins with a war between humans and a united army of non-humans who are oppressed in this world. It turns out that Yaskir takes part in it and supports the weaker side. Suddenly time stops and a sum entity contacts the hero. It intends to tell the bard the story of the seven heroes, which should later inspire the oppressed peoples to stand up against the humans. It all began 1200 years ago, before the conjunction of the spheres. Back then, there were only elves and red men, native dwarves. No one had ever heard of humans or monsters. Elves are divided into highborn and lowborn. The rulers observe a strict hierarchy and are protected from the common people by clan protectors. Elves were mired in centuries of war, but one day a new ruler ascended to the throne in the kingdom of Centria. He decided to unite the peoples and make the long-awaited peace, as the elves are already at the limit and starvation could ruin their entire nation. Meanwhile, Merwin, the king's sister, is in love with her guard named Fjol. His clan learns of this and banishes the man from the family, sending him away in disgrace. He wanders around the villages for a while and is soon imprisoned for fighting. Meanwhile, a bard named Isle arrives in the same village. She has already found fame singing ballads that stir up protest against the highborn elves. Because of an altercation in a tavern, she is imprisoned, where she meets Fjall. There we learn that in the past I also belonged to a clan offending the monarchs of another country, and the heroes used to be enemies. Eventually they both manage to escape and are attacked by mercenaries who happen to work for three opposing countries. The heroes don't understand anything, as this means that someone has decided to stage a coup and overthrow the monarchs of these countries, killing the clans that protect them along the way. After which the heroes decide to unite and find out what is going on. Also the girl in the tavern, who has the gift of foretelling, informs Isle of a certain prophecy. Let's go back in time. The king of Synthria invites the heads of the neighboring kingdoms to sign a peace pact. During the celebration, they are attacked by an unknown creature that kills all the monarchs and their clans. It turns out that the supreme magician Balor, the commander of the army Aridin, and the king's sister Merwin decided to stage a coup to kill the rulers and unite all the kingdoms. They succeed, but it turns out that the men used Merwin. Although she has become empress, she has no real power, and they are going to get rid of her at the first opportunity. We also learn that the creature that attacked the rulers was summoned by Balor. It turns out that the man stole the research of another mage and solved the mystery of obelisks scattered in different parts of the continent. With their help, Balor was transported to another world, where Entity offered him the power, that very creature. However, the wizard was not enough. He plans to conquer not only all the kingdoms of his world, but other worlds as well. The Entity says he can give him the power of chaos, but it requires a truly valuable sacrifice. Meanwhile, the heroes learn what happened in Sintria and decide to avenge their clans on the new empress and her minions. They realize that they can't handle an entire army alone, so they decide to find allies. They first head to the Wasteland, where Isle finds her teacher, Sian, the finest swordswoman the world has ever seen. The woman informs them that they will also need an army for their plan, but they will need money to hire mercenaries. The three of them decide to rob a bank, but find that Sentria's army has long since taken all the money for themselves. Recall that the centuries-long war between the elves has completely drained all the nations. The guardsmen of the Empire track down the heroes and wound Sian with a poisoned blade during the battle, but they manage to escape. While searching for medicinal herbs, they run into Kallan, who also turns out to have a grudge against the Empire. He joins the heroes and tells them that the only way to save their friend is to go to a sorceress living nearby. After wandering through a magical fog that makes the worst memories come to mind, the heroes reach a sorceress named Zakar. She treats Sian, and we learn that she has a so-called celestial wind named Sindril. He is the one who learned the secret of the obelisks, and it was Balor who stole his knowledge. 
Indril tells us that the Supreme Wizard does not know about all of the obelisk's capabilities. For example, that they can be used to travel not only to other worlds, but also between the obelisks themselves. We also soon learn that this magic can even control time itself. Now the six heroes are about to head for Sintria, and to do so, Sindril wants to move them with the obelisk. However, something goes wrong, and they end up in another world. There they are attacked by an unknown monster. It chases them, but the heroes manage to jump into the portal, and the monster is cut in half. In parallel, we are told the story of a dwarf girl named Meldoff. Her beloved woman was raped and killed by elven guardsmen. She went a little crazy, started talking to her hammer, and set out for revenge. Eventually she succeeds in killing all of the guardsmen involved in her lover's death, but after that she does not know what to do. Meldoff takes up residence in a cave not far from Sintria, and soon notices the heroes appearing out of nowhere. She invites the travelers to visit her and, upon learning of their plan, decides to join them. Meanwhile, Empress Mervyn realizes that her days are numbered and she will soon be killed. The girl gets out of the castle and notices General Aridin, who is going somewhere secretly. She follows him and discovers that he is secretly meeting with a Loburn elf. Mervyn decides to take this chance. She convinces Aridin to unite against the arrogant Balor and rule the Empire herself. The girl also meets the young wizard Avalak, who is clearly unaware of the noble's backroom games. She gets him to steal a book from Balor with which he can open gates to other worlds. Eventually they succeed in overthrowing the wizard and lock him in a special dungeon. However, it turns out Avalak is too inexperienced to use the magic of the obelisks. Mervyn then returns to Balor and proposes a fresh start. They will rule on equal terms and he will help open gates to other worlds where the Empire can obtain food. Recall that the army and people need it so badly. Soon the Empress is informed that several heroes are on their way to Sintria to overthrow the new government. Their actions agitate the people, who begin to revolt. Mervyn discovers that one of these heroes is her former lover, Fjol. She orders her to kill all the rebels, but to bring Phyle alive to conceive a child with him. Some time later, a squad of Imperial Guardsmen led by Aridin, along with Balor, are sent to another world for scouting. The wizard, intoxicated with power, intends to become the most powerful being on Earth after all. He teleports the squad to the world with the essence, where he sacrifices his most precious thing, his beloved apprentice, and acquires the power of chaos magic. Balor does not kill the Guardsmen, but sends them to some other world to suffer forever. Toward the end of the season, we see the troop wander this world for a long time, after which Urendin wears the skull he found as a helmet, hinting to us how the wild hunt came about. Meanwhile, the seven heroes try to devise a plan to overthrow the Empress and her minions. They realize that they are too small, and that the creature still protects the kingdom. Sindril informs them that he can merge the heart of the monster, which was recently cut open by a portal, with the heart of one of them. Such a fusion grants the elf incredible strength, but at the same time it is very dangerous and there is a chance of death. Isle agrees to the merger and the heroes hold a farewell party. During the journey, Isle and Fjall become close and fall in love with each other, so in the morning the man takes a potion instead of his beloved. For several hours, Fjol suffers pain, but survives and becomes the very first Witcher. After that, Isle and Fjol sleep together. Meanwhile, Sian realizes that even with the new power, they will not be able to get into the palace. She goes to Sintria and requests an audience with the Empress. The woman informs her that for a huge reward she can bring her Fjol alive and kill the others. Merwin agrees and sends a squad of guardsmen with her. However, the soldiers fall into a trap, as she has previously arranged with the mercenaries to ambush them. Now disguised as Imperial Guards, the heroes, along with the mercenaries, are heading to the castle. Having dealt with the castle guards, the heroes speak to the people and inspire them to revolt. Isle kills the Empress. Yol fights the monster and wins. 
but he cannot deal with the monster inside him. He injures his friends, so Isle has to kill her love. At this time, the wizard Sindriel and Zaycare join forces to defeat Balor, who has appeared, and to destroy the main obelisk. However, they had no idea of the consequences. The veil between the worlds collapses and the worlds begin to seep into each other. This is the conjunction of the spheres. Now not only monsters from other realities, but also a huge number of humans have arrived in the lands of the elves. After a while we see that Isle is pregnant and that very girl fortune teller from the tavern gives another prophecy that her child will be an omen of the end of all times. Thus, in the scene after the credits, we see Ciri and the wizard Avalak, who has apparently mastered the magic of the obelisks and traveled forward in time. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the like button. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.